welcome back to the Pactrospective. This is Mariah Martin, or The Murder in the Red Barn, and this is The Where. The Pact seems to do a show in a new location every time we do a show, and today I have the honor of talking with Seth Rosen, Artistic Director of Interact Theatre Company, and also the guy who kind of came up with the idea of the Drake, where we did our show. How are you, Seth? I'm great. Great to be with you, Damon. <laughs> so, so, Seth, um, so maybe a little bit about yourself and um, you've been in town here for a number of decades I don't mean to age you right there uh, <laughs> and uh, and Interact has been around over 30 years yeah there we're, we just started our 33rd year wow so you started originally at the is the Adrian where you first started or where were you no, we actually started at the Annenberg Center at Penn uh, where I was working uh, my first job out of college at Penn and uh, we did our first um, basically our first five or six seasons there with one season out in um, out in Germantown um, and then we moved to the Arts Bank for one year basically two shows and then into the Adrian for 18 years wow. and then uh, just moved into the Drake in January of 2016. So what was uh what would you say was the impetus from going from the Adrian to the Drake? Well, we, we had a great, a great life at the Adrian. We, uh, we made it our home and, and it was, uh, well, you probably remembered. I mean, it was, it was charming. It had a lot of character, had a lot of warmth, a lot of intimacy. And we liked the work that we did there. We got to a point where there were basically two big issues. One, or maybe three issues. One was that we felt that we were increasingly encroached upon by the improv community, not in a malicious way, just that there were more and more improv activities going on in the building and the audiences and the shows themselves were generally louder, noisier, younger people who were less interested in being quiet for the sake of professional theater. And so that became a little bit of a challenge just to, to, to deal with. A second was that we were growing and we felt that we needed to um, have a bigger space for audience and a bigger space artistically to work within. Um, and the third was a, 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 a desire to have a little more control of our destiny and our, our facilities. Uh, at the Adrian, we were part of a multi-use building. When you walk in the front door, you're in a lobby that is jointly uh, maintained by all the groups in the building and the landlord. And we didn't have uh, jurisdiction over it in terms of design or how it looked. We only had jurisdiction over our individual spaces. And so those kinds of things all led to us deciding to look for a new space. And when we walked into the Drake, which I'd been in uh, a couple of times over the previous uh, 18 years, it, it, uh, it just immediately became a possibility. When I'd seen it before, it was one large space, a, a dance space, much wider than deep. And, uh, it, and the ceilings were very low and, we, and I didn't remember it as a space that would work for us. But when we were showed it, um, by our, our broker, they had already taken down a lot of the, uh, what UArts had put in, in terms of uh, masking and, and all kinds of um, structure that made it much smaller than it, than it actually was. And the room was huge and had 16 foot ceilings, which is 50% higher than we had at, uh, at the Adrian. So we immediately, our eyes lit up and we just were excited about the move right away. I remember, uh, you know, I, I was kind of lucky because, um, you know, disclosure, you were uh, the PAX board president for a number of years. And I remember uh, when you first got into the Drake, uh, I remember, I think I might have been, maybe I was with Dan, but uh, I came over and you showed us. It's like, you know, don't tell anybody about this yet. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but check this place out. And we saw the, the raw room after they had, I guess, taken out the drop ceilings or whatever was yep. in there. And we yep. saw a big empty space. I mean, it's a former ballroom and in the middle of Center City to have what was, I think it's 95 by 65 foot space, 16 foot ceilings and no, um, no, no impediments, no pillars or nothing like that. So it meant that we could create whatever we wanted within that room. And we knew we were going to put in two theaters. And so it was only then a question of, of what the specific design was. But we brought... Um, in our very first time going there, um, after um, we saw just our staff, we brought um, Paul Masegian from Playpen and Leonard Haas, who was the board chair at Playpen at the time, in there, and, and everybody just lit up. And we just knew this could happen. And uh, then it was just a, 
mostly fun part of designing it with our architects and envisioning it and figuring out how how to how to make a space function as a what we wanted to be a, a, a center for new plays and who to bring over to be part of that. So I guess going back a little bit, you know, talking about, you know, this becoming the fruition of a center of new plays. Can you talk a little bit about about what Interact is and what kind of theater company it is? Sure. So we we're going into, as I said, we're into our 33rd season and uh, we've been really driven by four um, artistic values, which are artistic risk, which we, we look at as basically doing new work all the time. Um, collaboration of all kinds, not just collaboration by the very nature of theater as a collaborative art, but also collaborating with other entities to create art and to, to jointly promote it and reach new communities. Um, diversity in every way, uh, in our hiring practices on stage, playwrights, et cetera, um, and uh, civic engagement, which has been a driving force for us as well, doing plays that bring people together, have conversations about difficult and pressing issues in the world. Um, but when we, when we decided to move, even, well, even before we decided to move, we had an idea that the Adrian could be a center for new plays. Playpen was already there working under our aegis and um, Simpatico had been there uh, on and off a bit. And we thought that the Adrian was well s situated to be that, but the, the forces that were around us, including our landlord and other companies in the building weren't necessarily going to coalesce around that vision fully. Uh, so when we saw the Drake, we just realized this, we could make it happen from, from the start and we can design it to our specifications. And when we walk in, I still feel this way. Every time I walk in the front door of the Drake, I feel like this is our space. And if there's a, a spot on the wall that's messed up, that's our responsibility, but I'm glad it's our responsibility because we get to decide how it, how it looks and how it functions. And while that's an ongoing challenge, it's also something I, I've desired from the beginning. And, and the, the idea of the Center of New Plays was that we would bring uh, resident partners in to, to, together with us who would have their full seasons in the spaces at the Drake. And in addition to the, us and those four theaters, which, were, which are Playpen, Azuka, Inish Nua and Simpatico, we also would be able to rent to other theaters and we'd have a rehearsal room and a lobby that could be used for uh, rehearsals, classrooms, all kinds of um, community meetings and so forth. And that we wanted this to be a place where playwrights and theater makers related to new work um, could, could feel like was a home for them in the middle of this region. So uh, you mentioned that part of the fun uh, of having this place was to be able to design it. Yeah. So what was it? Yeah, I mean, we've had conversations about this because, you know, PAC was always looking for a space. We were in residence of Broad Street Ministry for about seven years, and that was mm -hmm. great. And we loved that place. And since then, we've been a bit more nomadic, you know, doing more site specific stuff. Right. Um, and, you know, we've had a constant kind of search of like trying to find a place that we can turn into our home. So now you've got this big open space and you talked about building two theaters in there. So now you have now you have the, the, the ability to do it. So what made you design the Drake the way you designed it? So we met with the architects and we told them that there were a couple of things that were absolutely non-negotiable. Uh, one, there had to be two theaters um, and that they shouldn't be identical. They should, be, they should have different attributes, but that we needed two theater spaces. Um, and obviously we needed all the accompanying things that you have to have with those spaces. We had to have public bathrooms and we had to have um, backstage space and storage space for all of our equipment and so forth and, and tech booths and, and whatnot. And then we, and an office. And they came back to us, their first pass at the design was uh, two theaters similar to in, in size to what we have, but with one grand entrance into the, a, a large long lobby. Mm. And then from that lobby, you went to the two theaters. And we immediately realized that that was not what we wanted because we wanted to make sure that there could be two shows going on at any given time and that they could entirely capture their own audience and that there could be a reception for one that wouldn't disrupt the other uh, show. And so that was the main, the, that was the really big decision was structurally to have two separate lobbies, two separate entrances. And then the other decisions that we had to deal with were things like, do we want to have a um, uh, an HVAC, um, you know, heating, ventilating, air conditioning system that was designed for regular theatrical lights that were very that got very very hot and so you need a system that can cool those lights down 
which is going to be a an older system that's actually cheaper to make um but is going to be more expensive to run because you're trying to cool the place down constantly or do we invest a lot in led lights so that we have um much less hot uh let less heat being generated by our lighting and a system that doesn't have to work as hard to cool them and that's what we went with we're very happy we did that so our we had a lot higher upfront cost and then we're able to, to uh, we have, I think, the most LED lights in a space in the city, maybe wow. not next, next to the Kimmel, but of, among theaters. And, um, and, we're, and we have very low utility bills. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, I can't, like, I, didn't, I didn't know about those original plans about having the one lobby. I yeah. can't imagine what that would be like because of, you know, when we did Mariah Martin, I'm pretty sure there was something happening in the proscenium at the time. And I know that the only way you can really load in stuff is really through that front door uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, of the Bluver. And, or, you know, you can get some stuff into the back as well, right. but, you know, most stuff kind of goes through the front. Right. And so, you know, how awkward would that be on your opening there, night? Like, there are so many levels. Space? Yep. And there would be a big crowd outside in one spot, which would happen to be right in the middle of the block. Right now, there's where the Bluver entrance is, where you worked. Um, it's it's part of the residential block, but it's the smaller theater, so it's a little bit less of a crowd problem. And the other uh, entrances where there isn't any, uh, not across the street from any residences. So it 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 worked out really well in every way. So Interact is always performs in the proscenium, and then the yeah. and then the Bluver uh, is used by everyone. And then all the resident theater companies have one show in the proscenium at some point. So the basic idea going in, which has changed a bit, is that Interact was going to do its four shows in the proscenium, which has been the case so far. Though that's not a rule we could we could negotiate. I would like to do a show in the Bluebird at some point when it's the right one, and we can negotiate with the, uh, another company. And that each of the three uh, producing partners, Sympatico, Inishnua, and Azuka, would do two shows in the Bluebird and one in the proscenium. As it's played out, Azuka has done two in the proscenium, and Inishnua has done three in the bluever and that's i think because of what they think they can get an audience and artistic size of a scale of show and so forth yeah. you uh because the one's a proscenium and then the bluever is a a black box is that part of the reason why uh you're interested in maybe going into the bluever because you do have that more flexibility in there yeah i mean i'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of the great delights from a purely as a as a entrepreneur on this is because Interact doesn't benefit it directly, is, is going into the Bluver every show and seeing a completely different configuration, way of using the space. That gives me so much joy because it's exactly what we wanted. And I'm, I'm thrilled that not only the resident partners, but even renters like yourselves, when you guys came in, you did something very different from everybody else. You built an entire theater within the theater. And <laughs> I find that thrilling because it means that the space is doing what it's supposed to do. It's much harder to do that in the proscenium where the seating is fixed. Now, we, we still have some flexibility. We did Hype Man last season or a year and a half ago now, um, where we had three quarters and, and a stage was on, a, a, a sort of mini stage was on the stage and we had audience on two sides. Um, and we, we'll do more things like that. But I, I tend to like, I like knowing the space I'm going to work in and being able to think of the season that's going to be there mm -hmm. rather than running around and scrambling to find a new space all the time. So um, we, we, we figured out the Adrian over five or six years and then started to find our groove there. And now we're doing that at the Drake. And I, I enjoyed that process. Yeah, that was, uh, it was fun for us because uh, as a theater company that does mostly stuff that's either in found spaces or site specific, uh, that was, we did Mariah Martin, that was spring of 2018. We had produced shows since 2010. And that was only our second show ever in an actual theater. Right. <laughs> so, so that was fun for us. It's like, oh, look, there's a grid already. <laughs> right. You, <laughs> you didn't know, have really... to worry about certain things. That's right. Right. So, you know, that's, it was super enjoyable. Um, you know, over the course of, of Interact's career, uh, you know, just get, getting back to Interact again, uh, do you have a favorite, a favorite moment of Interact or a favorite show? Uh, I have a, I have a lot of favorites, but it's it's always hard to uh, not come back to this play 6221 in our fifth season, which is um, 6221 was Tom Gibbons, uh, our resident playwrights three act epic 
world premiere about the move tragedy um, that had happened uh, about eight years earlier. This was in 1993. And it was the show that both put us on the map as a, as a, a theater, a serious theater to contend with, but also uh, really defined in, in so many ways what, what we wanted to make with theater, what, what, the val what we thought the purpose of theater was for us. And we, we will, Tom and I say this to each other all the time, we just don't think we'll ever get the thrill of that again. It was so exciting and challenging, exhilarating. Uh, we're, we're never gonna get that again, but it was absolutely the most seminal moment in my career and uh, uh, absolutely set us on a trajectory that I'm very proud of. Hmm. So, so now that we're, we're all stopped for a bit, um, you know, we don't know when theater's coming back. That's part of the reason why, you know, PAC's doing this PAC perspective because we, can have, we have the time to take an in-depth right. look at stuff we've done. We have our book club and we're still gonna do some programming in the fall uh on zoom if it needs to be uh but well what are what are you up to now seth what's what's going on with you what's kind of keeping you engaged or excited well we're like everybody else we're trying to figure out how to how to get back to making theater and and what format that's going to be and for whom it's going to be and 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 how they're going to be engaging us we are or i should say i am not one of those people who is immediately interested in pivoting to virtual theater uh, that is partly just a personal choice. I'm not, it's not my bag. I'm not that excited about that process, but it's also because I feel ultimately if, if we're all making virtual theater, then we ought to, we might as well all just go into television and film because that's, that's, that's what watching, you know, drama on a screen is for. Um, and so we're trying to figure out that balance for next year, which is, or, the, or this coming year, which is a real, uncertain moment for all of us. Uh, we're Right now we're planning a season starting after January and we're expecting to have a combination of in-house, in, you know, live in-person socially distanced audiences as well as online viewers for each performance. But a lot could change that between now and, and, and January. And, uh, but I do feel very confident that we will get back to making theater for in-person live audiences, socially distant or not, um, I don't know when, because we have no idea how the public health situation is going to unfold and uh, when either there's going to be a vaccine or enough confidence that people will take risk again. We don't know that, but I believe we will get back to it because I believe there's enough of a desire on, the, on behalf of both patrons as well as theater makers to, to get back to that. I don't think we're, we're going to become in a virtual art form. Hmm. Well, Seth Rosen. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to talk to me about, about the Drake. And, you know, Pac had a great time there uh, a few years ago. We're back. glad to have you. Yeah, so thanks come again. Come back. We, we, will. <laughs> we will. We'll all come back. We'll all come back. <laughs> Good. <laughs> thanks again, Seth. Thank you.